Hi, this is Peter at Berserk Arcade at BerserkArcade.com and this is tutorial 157. So we're just going to continue on with our little quick setup and clean up. So in this one here we're going to start working with our chests and looting. So I've gone ahead, I've included a few more asset packages and a treasure chest from GamerDad that has quite a few materials attached to it. Now the one I've been using only had one material. Uh, so I'm going to edit the script a bit so that it can take advantage of multiple materials on a chest. So I've got these prefabs. I'm just going to drag them into the scene. And let's just hide them. Here's my large chest. I've already gone ahead and added the chest script, so I'm just going to remove that now. So let's remove the component. Actually, we'll remove all of it. And it doesn't have any animations, so I'm going to remove that as well. Now the other chest I have does have animations, and it's got two, open and close. I'm going to turn off play automatically. And let's go ahead and add the script. Now I want to add the script up here. As you see, I've gone ahead and created the hack and slash tutorial uh, submenu, which opens up to the rest. So I'm going to want to add that script right here. So let's go ahead and actually open up the chest script. And of course it starts with a C. And I'm going to go up to the top and I'm going to add it right above the required component parts. So we should be used to typing this by now. Add content or components, sorry. Menu. And then where we want it. And let me just take a look to make sure it's hack and slash tutorial and objects. So, hack and slash tutorial slash objects slash chess. So I'm going to save that off. I'll give it a second to quickly recompile. It's done. And we'll just take a look. And it should be under objects. And there's our chess. So I'll select our large chess prefab first. And I'm just going to add that to it. And it added the chest, the audio source, and the box collider. And I'm going to do my small chest at the same time. So we'll go ahead and go down to our new menu option. And we'll add that. It's losing its prefab, and that's fine. And again, it adds the box collider, the audio source, and the chest script. So let's just start off at the top here. Uh, we'll look at the animations. I have two animations for this chest. One is called open, one is called close. Uh, we can do the exact same thing that we did with our, our player movement. We can actually expose the name of the animations down here in case you want to name them differently. Uh, and well, let's go ahead and do that now. So I'm going to come down. I'm going to go under my num and above the audio sources. And we'll create two public strings. So public string, open, anim, name, and public string, close, anim, name. Now you can actually expose animation clips if you want to. Uh, I'm just going to keep it simple. I'm just going to go with the strings. And if we go ahead and look at our animations, I'm just going to shrink these down. It's just open and close. So open, close. And now anytime we go to play an animation, we're going to want to replace it with these string names. So I'm going to go quickly look for them. So we'll just say animation. It's right here, play animation open. We'll get rid of that. Uh, there's six matches, so we'll just keep going down. And here's another open. And here's a close. And I'll just change this from open anime anim name to close. And we just keep going down. So this way here you can use any 
name you want for your actual animation. And I'm just quickly going through just to make sure again. And we did get them all. So I'll just save that off. I'll come back in. And the animation part's done. I've got play automatically unticked. And I'm just going to shrink that down and move on to the next component. So it's the box collider. I'm going to go into a orthogonal view and I'm going to go on the Z axis. And I'm going to go ahead and just position it. So it looks about there. I'm going to stretch out the X. You basically want to encompass the whole box here. And we'll do the Y while I'm here. I'll switch to the top. Make sure I get the Z in there. And we'll go back to perspective. And that's pretty much all we have to do for our box collider. So I'm going to shrink that down. Go to audio source. Now we need an audio source attached to this game object if we actually want audio being played from it. Uh, but other than that, you don't really need to do a whole lot here. You might want to play with some of these levels. Uh, there's no point in putting an audio clip in here as we have two that this object can make. And later on, we'll want to create a sound manager that will hold all of the sounds. But for now, we're just actually dragging the sounds into our sound clip here. And I didn't actually include any here. But if you did have them, you would just drag your open sound here and your close sound here to the close sound. And that's all you have to do. So audio source is done. And I'm going to come down to, I guess, the chess script. And we've already explained about the open and close sound. I'm actually going to go ahead and take a look here for the play option for the sound. So we're telling it to play the open sound and the close sound. Now, I believe that there's no sound available. It just does not play anything. So I'm not going to put any checks in there to say, hey, you know, if there is no sound, you know, don't play. Because I believe by default, it just doesn't play. So we'll leave that blank for now, just to test. And it's also looking for a particle effect on our chest. And I'm just going to start that up. And we'll probably get an error. And it looks like we did. And we'll open it up, and sure enough, it's a particle effect. Now, if you don't want a particle effect attached to your game object, I'm just going to say if particle effect does not equal null, and we'll turn the particle effect off. And I'm sure this is probably elsewhere in the script. And we'll turn it on true here. So we'll do the exact same thing here. If particle effect does not equal null, turn it back on. And we'll go down a bit more just to make sure. And right here as well. Particle effect does not equal null. Switch it to false. And that looks like all of them. So if we were to clear the console, start it back up, errors are gone. Now, the functionality probably still isn't in there. So let's start working on that. We'll just stop it. And we'll just look at the first chest. I'm still working on the, the little chest that I'm used to working with. This is the one that I'm using in my game. And let's just take a look here. The next option is parts. Now these are the actual meshes of the, the chest itself. So I'm going to open up my small chest. And as you see, there's a part A and a part B. Where if we look at the chest that GamerDad provide us, he only actually has one mesh here. So it's one mesh, no animations, and a lot of materials. So there's quite a bit of difference between the two chests. So this should, if your chest is different than either one of these, uh, hopefully this is enough to give you a good idea of um, how to implement your chest with this script. So I'm going to go ahead, select my small chest, and for this parts, I have two of them that I want to play with. Now this is for the highlight color. So I'm just going to drag my A here. It might be there. It really doesn't matter on the options. It's basically just wants uh, to be able to know what parts of the chest to uh, highlight when you hover your mouse over. Uh, the state, we can actually switch to private now. We don't need that exposed anymore. And if you are playing around with the state, make sure to uh, keep it exposed so you can keep watching it. Max dis distance I want, and the in use doesn't need to be exposed anymore either. So I'm gonna switch that as well. 
So we'll just save that off. And those are gone. So only thing we have exposed are the things we actually need to access in the inspector now. So let's go ahead and try it out again. I'm going to run up to one of my chests. And of course, I got the skeleton guy chasing me. Now when I mouse over it, you get the mouse, uh, mouse uh, effect. But it's still not opening. So let's take a look at that. We'll head into Mono Develop. And let's go down to the mouse up event. That's the one we're using to actually catch when the player clicks on it. And I'm just going to enable my debug message. So I'm going to click start. Now we're probably are going to get an error because we don't have our GUI hooked up yet. And it sends a broadcast message to our GUI to display the items in the chest. But let's just go ahead and click. And sure enough, this time it did open. And if you notice, I clicked twice. And I'm getting a message. And we'll be fixing that in the next tutorial where we actually start implementing the GUI. But this is basically all the script does. Is it opens up, it generates some items, it passes these items on to our GUI, which right now we do not have enabled, so it can't find it. And of course, if we take a look here, we'll just keep getting the on mouse up event, which is actually what we're supposed to get because of the error. So let's just quit that and let's start working on the other chess. So I'm just going to move over to that chess and I'm going to actually turn off the the cast shadow and receive shadow because I actually don't want my chests to cast and receive shadows and I'm also going to do the exact same thing for my small chests. Now if you want your chests casting and receiving shadows by all means just leave them on. But I'm going to click onto my large chest here and I'm going to go through everything. Now we don't have any animations so I'm going to be leaving my animations null. I'm going to come down to the box collider and I'm just going to change the size so I'm going to move it up a bit and I'm just going to make things bigger so right about there that encompasses everything and we'll do the Y and then we'll look on any other axes and we'll do the X so there we go it's a little bit bigger than what I need but it fits uh, that's done so I'm going to close down my box collider uh, the audio source like before we don't need to play with it unless you want to start playing with uh, some of the options that come with it. And well, we're going to leave these blank. Open sound, closed sound, we have none. And the particle effect, uh, we have none. I'm actually going to add a particle effect to this little chest after, and we'll show what that looks like. So for the parts, we only actually have one part. And we'll just add it here. And I'll try again. There we go. Max distance. Uh, Exact same. We'll leave it the same. And I'll run up to the chest. And you'll notice that when I'm mousing over it, even from afar, nothing happens. But it does work on the little one. So why is that? Well, it's because of all the materials that we have here. If I go into the script, we'll go down to our highlight event, which is called from on mouse enter and on mouse exit right here. And on mouse enter, we're just calling that function, passing in true. And on the exit, we're calling the exact same function as passing in false. So it basically just turns the highlight on and off. But what it's trying to do is grab the material and set the color. But since there's more materials, it doesn't quite work that way. So there's actually one line we got to add in here. So we're just going to say four. And I'm going to call this, well, this is for the parts up here. I'm going to be putting it below this one because up here we're going through the parts. Uh, next, I want to go through and access the materials. So I'm going to say four and make an integer. I'm just going to call it mat count. I'm going to start it off at zero. And I'm going to say mat count is less than, and just to cut down on typos, I'm going to copy and paste this part of it right up to the renderer. Hit dot. And then instead of saying material, I'm going to pick materials because if you look here, it actually returns an array. And that's what we want. And we'll just say dot, and we can get the length of that array. And then we'll want to increase our counter. And I'll just have that line in one more time. And then when we're coming through here, I'm just going to put a space. You can actually say dot. Well, we don't actually have to do it. All we have to do is actually add an S on the end here, 
and then pass in the index, which is a mat count. And we'll do the exact same thing for the deactivation. So let's save that off and we'll go make sure there's no errors. No errors come up and let's hit play. And now, uh, actually, <laughs> we'll just undo this. Whoops, sorry, redo. If you look down here, I'm setting it back to its default color and by cutting and pasting these two lines down there, I actually ended up telling it to set it to yellow on mouse out, which is not what we want. So I'll do a quick edit down here. And this was mat count. There we go. So now let's start it up. I'm going to switch back to perspective view. And we'll start it up. And I'm going to run around to this side of my chest. And when I hover over the big chest, you notice it turns yellow. And when I hover off, it uh, turns back to its, its default gray color. And of course, the little one still works as well. Now let's quickly add a particle effect to the little one, uh, just to see how that works. So I'm going to take the small chest. I'm going to go into my art assets. Um, let's see, I'm just going to go to the proto pack because I'm sure there's lots of particle effects in here. Uh, here we go, particle emitters. Uh, I'm just going to look at this first one. It looks like it shoots out uh, sure, this one here. I'm just going to take it, drop it onto the small chest. And there we go. I'm going to disable it by default, start it up. I'm going to run over to my chest. I'm going to open it up. I wasn't close enough. And I actually have to connect my particle effect to my chest script right here there we go so let's go over and make sure we're close enough and there we go that's actually a kind of a cool effect but and that should have our chest set up for us I'm gonna move on now to where we are going to implement the GUI and start integrating that with our chest so I'll see you in the next tutorial bye bye